Ayo, what is up? Welcome back to my channel. I hope you had a fantastic weekend. Mine was super busy, but we finally back, dropping a video, so that feels good. Today, the video is going to be on the Lords of Fire in Final Fantasy Ever Crisis. So, I do hope you enjoy. Among the celebrated figures, Cloud emerged as a unique character. As the divine artisan, he was the god of fire. So, the lords of fire in Evercrisis are Sephiroth and Cloud. Of course, because of their new weapons, the Sky Splitter for Cloud and the Radiant Edge for Sephiroth. And then, of course, their new armors is what really makes them the Lords of Fire. That is the official festive garb for Cloud and the celebratory garb for Sephiroth. Yeah. So, Sephiroth's garb gives him Fire Mastery, which is the 20% fire ability damage. While Cloud's gives him Flame Blade Arcanum, which is the 35% fire ability damage. Let's get into it. The current weapons that grant fire potency in the game, apart from the two that I just mentioned, are Glenn's Crew Kicker, Red's Rage Collar, Sephiroth's Prototype Crimson Blade, Zack's Crystal Sword, and Barrett's Flame Projector. Now the core for all of the fire cloud builds that I will be doing are the Scar Splitter of course as the main weapon and then the two sub weapons will be Sephiroth's Radiant Edge and Red's Rage Collar. So with all of the fire potency sub weapons cloud can achieve a minimum fire potency of 84 points and a maximum fire potency of 96 points. So that is just between 9 and 10, which means that he cannot reach level 10, and that means that Zack's Crystal Sword is irrelevant for these builds. What that basically means is that Zack's Crystal Sword is a little different to the other fire potency weapons. It gives the most boost fire potency in the game at 48 points, compared to, for instance, Sephiroth's Crimson Blade, that gives 36 points. However, the R1 ability of the Crystal Sword is much weaker, giving only 27 points of boost attack versus the 40 on the Prototype Crimson Blade, for example. So, Zack's Crystal Sword, even with the extra fire potency, cannot help Cloud reach level 10. So, let's get into the meat of the video. The first build I have for Cloud with Fire Potency is the Sky Splitter as his main weapon, of course, and the Buster Sword as his secondary weapon. For sub weapons, as I mentioned, it is always Sephiroth's Radiant Edge and Red's Rage Collar, and for build 1, we have Sephiroth's Prototype Crimson Blade. This is a build that focuses on attack because of the Crimson Blade sub weapon. So here you can see the Sky Splitter gives 40 physical attack boost and 36 fire potency. The Buster Sword gives 13 HP and 18 attack. The Radiant Edge gives 27 physical attack and 18 fire potency. The Prototype Crimson Blade is the 20 attack and 18 fire potency. And the Rage Collar is the 27 attack and 12 fire potency. That gives him level 9 boost fire potency, which is 110% extra fire damage. The level 7 boost physical attack, that's 100 extra physical attack plus the 50% boost. He also gets level 7 boost attack, which is 50 more points for both physical and magical, and a 25% boost to each. And then just a small little level 2 HP boost, which gives him 50 extra HP plus a 15% boost. Alternatives, you could switch out the Buster Sword for the Apocalypse that will drop the level 2 HP boost in favor of a level 3 Wind Potency boost. Everything else remains the same.
there you have it. You will lose the HP. 12 points of HP at level 2 for 18 points of wind at level 3, giving him 25% wind damage. Another alternative would be to swap the Buster Sword for the Enhanced Sword, very similar to the last one. You swap the HP for Ice Potency in this case. So once again, you lose the level 2 HP boost and you can gain a splash of ice damage. That is pretty much up to you, depending on how you want to do the build. For the second build for Cloud, I have the Sky Splitter, of course, as the main weapon. And this time I went with the Butterfly Edge. The sub weapons are. Once again, the core, core weapons, which are the Radiant Edge for Sephiroth and the Rage Collar for Red. But this time, I've swapped out Cr Prototype Crimson Blade for Glenn's Crew Kicker. That favors HP over attack. There you can see similar stats. 40 from the Sky Splitter, 36 Fire. But this time you get 27 HP from the Butterfly Edge and 12 Limit Break Potency. Then the Radiant Edge gives 27 Physical, 18 Fire. Rage Collar once again, 27 Attack and 12 Fire. But this time Crew Kicker gives 20 HP and 18 Fire Potency. So what you get with this build is once again level 9 Fire Potency Boost a level 7 physical attack boost. This time you only get a level 4 attack boost rather than level 7, giving you 50 of each and 10% physical magical boost. 47 HP this time, giving you a level 6 HP boost. That's 250 extra HP plus a 70% boost on your total HP. And then the 12 limit break. You can also swap the second build out. You could swap out the Butterfly Sword or Butterfly Edge with the Bandage Sword. In this case, you will actually lose a bit of HP and you will gain Ice Resistance. So when comparing Butterfly Edge and Bandage Sword, here you drop one level of boost HP to level five and you swap out the 12 Limit Break Potency points for 18 Ice Resistant points, giving you 20% Ice Resistance. It doesn't seem like a good trade, right? Losing HP and trading Limit Break Potency for Ice Resistance. Well, the Bandage Sword alternative is more for the Command Ability than for our abilities. With the Butterfly Edge, you get a Mid Potency Physical Defense increase for a single ally with a max of high, but with the Bandage Sword, you get Magic Defense of Mid Potency for all allies with a max of high. So that is basically a choice you need to make. If you want more utility, if you want Magic Defense for your whole party, go for Bandage Sword instead of Butterfly Edge. You will lose a bit of HP. In the R ability, you will lose one level, but could be worth the utility. Now... The, what I call the offhand alternatives is because in this build, or all builds with Cloud, his secondary weapon doesn't have any fire potency. So that is the weapon that is interchangeable. The sub weapons all need to have boost fire potency and the ones that are good for him have certain things in common and that is that they have physical attack boost R, attack boost R abilities and HP R abilities. That is why I went with the Butterfly Edge and Buster Sword because they synergize the best with the sub weapons that are pretty much mandatory. So the Butterfly Edge gives 27 HP, whereas the Buster Sword gives HP and attack, which synergizes with the sub weapons that you need for boost fire potency. You could take a different route and switch his secondary weapon for something like the Sedane Sword. The R1 ability of boost physical attack will then be wasted but you will get physical ability potency 18 points and you will get a powerful command ability. So that's pretty much up to you. That is choices that you can make to change the build to suit your style. Same thing with the Iron Blade, you'll get physical defense and crit and a utility command ability at the cost of 
the HP from the Butterfly Edge or the bit of HP and attack from the Buster Sword. So this is a very full screen of the two different builds. You can see the main hand weapon for each build, the offhand options for each build, the sub equipment for both builds and what stats and R abilities each build gives you. And yeah, because this is a lot of stuff on one screen, I've also created a comparison and I will show you that now in a second. There it is. So the first build has slightly less physical attack stat than the second build. They both have boost physical attack level 7 and boost fire potency level 9. Build 1 with the Buster Sword has level 7 boost attack, whereas build 2 only has level 4 boost attack. But build 1 has only boost HP of 2 points and build 2 has boost HP of 6 points and the extra limit break potency. So build 1 focuses more on attack, whereas build 2 gives you a lot more HP boost. So Buster Sword secondary for attack with the Prototype Crimson Blade and Butterfly Edge with the Crew Kicker for HP. Those are my ultimate cloud fire builds for now that are based on the weapons that we have available in the game. Let me know what you think of the builds, which one you prefer, and if you have any alternatives yourself. And stay tuned for part two, which will cover the other Lord of Fire, Sephiroth. Subscribe and you will be notified when that drops. Thank you once again so much for watching. I hope you have a fantastic day or night, wherever you may be in the world. See ya.